you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack and MP Presents. Once again, we are always so very, very happy to be with you. And we've got a great program, eye-opening program. But, of course, uh, Jack, you help us to understand what's going on in the Amen. world. Yeah. And we want to encourage you, keep sending in your questions. Our program is a question-and-answer program because the Bible has the answer for everything, Amen. doesn't it, Jack? Memorize this entire book. And I know what it says. So send your questions. We promise you'll hear from us. Absolutely. Go to our website, jvim.com. And also, if you would like to receive this wonderful new offer that we have, The Final Three Popes. I can't get over that title. The Final Three Popes? Well, Jack explains why he called it that. And the leaders of the Catholic Church are telling us that this pope is destroying the Catholic religion. They're saying, and I'm not, Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict, my two great yes. heroes in the Catholic faith. Well, just but want, this guy right now, watch out, get the book and find out why. I want to continue here, Jack, by giving our address, jvam.com is our uh, internet, of course, and here's another. Our address, Jack Van Hippie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007, or Jack Van Hippie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NNA6Y1. And what a great, great offer this is. It's quite a book that you wrote there, Jack. The Signals that Christ is coming very soon. He's destroyed Whoa. 17 Catholic doctrines according to the cardinals of the church. Now, you know what, Jack? I have something else here. And it's from World Net Daily. A wonderful, godly, godly man he is. And uh, he does answer so many questions in his magazine. But he had, for one of his, um, well, I should say, important uh, magazines, The Miraculous Resurrection whoo, of Jack Van Hippie. He has survived so very many things. No, he's not dead. He's alive and well. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in just a moment, we're going to talk, Jack, in just yeah. a moment, about why God brought him back. He could have taken him home to reward him for his great work for Christ. Mm -hmm. But God brought you back, Jack. Amen. You know, I've been in the ministry 72 years. I started with Billy Graham, and he pushed me to the top. And I want to say it's been a wonderful time. Do you know that for the first 70 years, I never missed a night. I never was sick. And then for the last 16 years, I've uh, really been in trouble. And I'm going to be 92 years of age in, within two years. And I've come out of retirement. They said I'd never preach again. You're going to hear the whole story. I was facing the deathbed. But God brought me back. By his stripes were healed. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you a marvelous story today and what God is doing. And I just had the Holy Spirit come August 13th. Say, God sent me to tell you, you are God's final prophet to the whole world to tell him that Jesus is about to come and set up the new world order, the Judeo Christian world order. Wow, it's near, near, near. Well, you know, Jack, uh, sort of a synopsis of what he has gone through is uh, he survived cancer. We've talked about that. Sepsis, a lot of people die from sepsis. It's a terrible infection. Heart disease, and he had to have the major valve replaced. Loss of speech, loss of memory, broken hip in four places. How wonderful it is, God did bring him back. And Jack, he brought you back for a reason. God has a reason for everything. And he brought you back for a reason. As I said, I never missed a night of preaching. 800 one-week church crusades in all the Protestant denominations, all of them. And then uh, I had 1,500 invitations on a waiting list. 
And I said, Billy Graham, what am I going to do? You're my mentor. He said, do what I do. Get somebody, get them all together. And so we had 250 citywide crusades with 15, 20 million attendants. We had 7 million saved. And all through that, once in a while I heaved, but I never missed a night. And then it started. It started. And everyone thought, even my board, one, at a board meeting, one, home, one man went home and said, he'll never preach again. He's finished. Thank yeah. God. I'm here. God knew. God knew. Well, you know, one reason, friends, <clears throat> I believe the Lord brought him back. Yes, from the dead almost. They gave him 20% chance to live. Because so many people are so frustrated today. They wonder, what in the world is going on? Uh, let's deal, first of all, with something that is, just seems to be everywhere, and it is the weather disasters. Oh, everywhere, friends. Billion-dollar weather disasters. Did you know that last year was the most expensive year for U.S. natural disasters? Last year, the most expensive year. You know, we had hurricanes, we had wildfires, we had hailstones, and uh, we had uh, so many other things, drought, and then we had uh, tornadoes, we had flooding. I'm just sort of skimming this here. And then we had uh, tornado outbreaks again. Right now in Hawaii, Hawaii, volcano uh, inflicts the whole um, island there. It's uh, really so very, very sad what's going on with the weather. And this is worldwide, Chinese uh, village. Well, they were almost utterly destroyed by a landslide. Can you imagine that natural disaster? And then Sierra Leone killed hundreds of people with their landslide. And then, of course, Afghanistan, Pakistan, avalanches. Oh, it's everywhere, There's my no friends. There's no end to it, No. Annie. Worst floods in a decade poured. I'll end with this one. The worst floods in a decade poured over South Asia. 1,400 people were killed. And then it hit India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. It's everywhere, my friends. On the earthquakes, of course, we know about Mexico killing 369 people there in Mexico City. People are frustrated. Where do I go? What does this mean? How will it affect my life? I'm scared to death. Jack, God brought you back so that you could help people to know where we are and that in one way, this means something that is pointing to something that is good. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As soon as you have my video out, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and that happened to me. August 13th, the Holy Spirit he came to my home. He's a spirit, but he communicates with us. And he started showing me things I've never known, even though I've memorized the entire Bible. And I'm going to be making some videos that will literally shock the whole world. Things you've never read, things you've never heard. Right. And I can hardly wait to start. But as I lay in that hospital, tears off and running, knowing I'd never preach again and being totally in a coma for 80 days, this little girl sat by my side five hours every day, and they said, if it were for her, you wouldn't be alive today, sweetheart, I love you. And then 38 days of recuperation, and another six weeks at home. And then one morning, I said, Rexella, I can think again. I know who I am. And I had to start going through my Bible again. The verses have all come back, but sometimes the numbers are a little difficult. I've got 20,000 verses memorized, and that's 20,000 chapters with 20,000 verses, 40,000. I think you'd mixed up too, but I know the Bible. I know the verses. And we're going to do Q&As every week for now right. on. And by the way, we are in every single nation on earth now through radio. Thank God for radio. 7 billion, 600 million every week. And now I'm going to pronounce in another week the greatest thing ever. We will come back again to television. Had been on for 47 years. Seven million saved. And ladies and gentlemen, 
I will also be reaching the entire world with television. Another time. Mm-hmm. 7 billion, 600 million. Twice, radio and TV. Tune in, because I'm going to get newspapers. If some of you folks will stand with us, I lost 50,000 donors while I was sick. I need you. Just $25 a month. 50,000 I lost. And I'm going to have bills of 10 million a year with all the different things. I'm trusting God. Please help me. Not for jets, not for million dollar homes. I don't believe in it. I wore the same suit. I'm going to brag right now for exactly seven years and I took no offering because I wanted every dime to go for God. I had a few ties. Every time Rick Sally got something, I got a new tie. Oh. I had one coat and so many ties to know what to do with it. I'm, I'm kidding. You, know, you deserve it. But anyway, I say all that to say this. Next week, I'm going to tell you right after the 4th of July uh, what is going to happen. We're going to reach every human being. And I need some of you to say, I'll write, underwrite an ad for my newspaper. I want to tell every paper in the world that Jesus is about to come like the Holy Spirit told me to do on that famous night 10 months ago. You are to preach the imminent return of Christ that's about to happen and set up that glorious kingdom of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Please, please help us. I check these earthquakes. Oh, yeah. These natural disasters are really in the Bible, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, I'm, let me get at it. Luke 21, verses 25, 28. There should be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And in the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for looking after those things which shall come to pass in the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Yes. Then, then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your eyes. Your redemption draws nigh, and the redemption is the rapture. And he's coming and coming soon. And I want to get these ads in every newspaper in the whole world. This is the last warning. God said, you're my final prophet to warn the world. Jack Van Impey, the Belgian Bible bombshell. Who would think that a little Belgian immigrant boy in this country who didn't even know how to speak English couldn't talk it in grade school? And then I learned it. And he now has brought me to this point. Oh, folks, tell others, tell others, please. And I tell you, July the 5th or that week, I'll tell you, all the television stations now will reach every human being every week till God calls me home. And I'm going to be 90 in two years from now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for letting me live. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, a significant sign that Jesus is coming. So, you know, when you pick up the newspaper, you read something like this. Just say, Lord, do protect my family. Help those people. Get them out of that horrible situation. Supply their needs. But thank you that it means you're coming soon. That's what this all means. It's in the Bible. Well, something else that really hurts my heart that has risen uh, to uh, all across the United States. The rates rose in men and women all of all ages and ethnic groups propelled by mental illness by substance disorders, by financial hardship and relationship problems has caused a horrible, horrible thing caused called suicide. Suicide rates rise across the United States. Have you ever thought of taking your life? A lot of people have. They lay, they lay the gun aside. They become frightened right at the end. But a lot of people have thought of taking their life. No way out. There is a way out. Suicides increase among American middle-aged adults. And then, of course, suicide claims more Americans. I couldn't get over this headline. Than car accidents or opioids. Well, we all know about Kate Spade. What beautiful things she designed Mm -hmm. for fashion. But she took her life. 
Oh, my, oh, my. And then, of course, we all know about some of the others, those uh, suicide rate, rates that are going up in the middle age. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, Kate Spade that I just mentioned, Anthony Bourdain, Robin Williams, and David Foster Wallace. They all took their lives. Did you know something? Fame doesn't work. Nothing like that really works to keep us from doing something so drastic. But Jack knows someone who can help you to overcome your depression or whatever makes you want to take your life. Jack, we need to pray that God will help yeah. our people to see a revival along that line. Not only are there holy spirits, but there are demonic spirits. And the angels were spirits in heaven with the Lord, and they sinned. And they were cast out of heaven. And Beelzebub is the leader of the movement. That's the name of the satanic one. A fallen angel. And it says that these fallen angels walk about seeking whom they may devour. That's what happened to me. Five years of it. Oh, but God had mercy on me. Amen. He says, come unto me, all oh, you that labor and are heavy laden with burdens, uh, give you rest. He gave me peace, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. He says, there's more to it than tongues. There's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And when you pray for the filling that happens, and you know what you begin to do? Singing in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and praising to Jesus. Amen. He can lift your spirit. You don't have to run around sad and brokenhearted. After five years of that, I could still praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul, so many say I'm like him. He was sick. He was stoned to Lystra. And he says in this first Corinthians, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. Oh, I'm so sick, Lord. The Lord said, no. I'm going to give you something even better. I'm going to give you comfort. Amen. And he says, I'm never going to pray about it again, Lord, for when I'm weak physically, I'm strong spiritually. That's what happened to me. I wouldn't trade anything for the past because God's made a new man out of Dr. Jack Van Emby. And I'm asking God for another 15, 20 million souls. I've won more souls than any man on earth outside of the great Billy Graham. And he was my mentor. He brought me to where I am. And I'm going to tell you, I need your help. I'm going to say it. I don't have the funds, but I'm getting the equipment. I have to get new equipment. My old equipment is over 40 years old. I need you. I lost 50,000 people while I was sick. Will you help me? $25 a month? Because I am planning to bombard this world with the message of Jesus from the Holy Bible. Not stories, not gimmicks, not damnable heresies and doctrines of devils. The Word of God. Not feel-good preaching. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrines. I'm going to preach on sin. I'm going to preach where you go if you do sin. Even if the Pope doesn't believe in hell, I do. 162 times in this Bible. Get my materials, you'll know. Help me for $25 a month. Start calling in, please. I'm going on television. We're going to announce all the stations in a couple of weeks. Every nation on earth will have my program through television and through radio. I pray, pray it. It's a good teacher. Seven billion. 600 million a week on radio and now also on TV. I'm going to reach every human being twice and I want to reach everybody through the newspapers of every country. Please, if you will sponsor your ad for your city, write and tell us about it. 
We'll Let send it. you the material. Absolutely. Let us hear from you. You know, if you're getting a blessing out of the program, we'd love to hear from you. We really would. And uh, you can go to our website, jbim.com. And, and uh, as I mentioned before, so many other things will be there for you. But let's go on here. What was one of the first things that Jesus did when he had a group of people? You know, the 4,000 came to hear him. The 5,000 came to hear him. And his disciples were fishing out there in the Sea of Galilee. And when he called them in, what did he do for all of these people? Number one, he fed them. He cared about them. And you know, we need to be caring for other people like our Lord did. My heart is so moved. And this is another sign with the famine the starvation that's going on around the world. You know, I couldn't believe this, that there's an estimated 360,000 Somali children severely malnourished. Oh, and I'll tell you, there's a, a need in so many other countries. That's just one all around the world, starvation. You know, even here in the United States, there are many people who are really not nourished. They don't have the right things. Little children have to go to school to get something to eat here in the United States. What does that say to your heart and to mine? We need to be helping those who are hungry, but helping them also to understand that this is a prophecy about the coming of the Lord. Is that right? Oh, yeah. And also, why it's that silly. The love of money is the root of all evil, while after which some coveted, they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with money. So who wouldn't give a dime for anyone? i got a little girl here. When I'm driving a car and I can't drive it anymore, but even now she does, she stops and parks, <laughs> and if anyone's standing with a basket, she... I said, honey, they probably have more than you do. I've been reading about in the papers. Oh, no, I can't. She said, I don't care. Anytime I see anybody with a little kid there, they're going to get money. She loves people. And you know, that's what the Bible says. Our commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Give the people what they need. And you know, you Christians... I can't understand Christians today. Oh, I love Jesus, and you never give them a dime? Do you know what Malachi 3, verses 8 and 9 says? You have robbed me. God is speaking. Robbed him, yes, of your tithes, 10%, and offerings. Oh, I hate the next part. You are cursed with a curse. Mm. He says, however, if you open the windows of heaven and pour out your finances and give to the poor and do everything you can to get this word to all the world like I'm trying to do, I'll send you a blessing that you'll not be able to receive. Hey, he's coming soon. And the Bible says it's going to be the rapture. Oh, yeah. Be caught up in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And as we're there for seven years, we get five crowns, five of them, the runner's crown, for running the race faithfully. Because you didn't run around in the hell holes of the world, the beer joints and all the rest. Mm. The soul winner's crown. Think of it. You're going to get a crown to lay at the feet of Jesus. And he said, many of you won't get it. You will be ashamed. Christians, save for all eternity. Bye. Because they were stingy. Covetousness. All they could pour into homes. All they could prepare and spend on clothing. Everything for the world. Their jets. Even these guys you're supporting. Quit supporting them. I'm asking for one thing. Every single soul being reached till I die. Two years from now I'll be 90. You've come out of retirement. I wasn't in it and I was unconscious for many months. Now I've come out of it, and I'm gonna tell you something. I would come out of retirement if there were just one soul to save. I know. I mean it's business true. for Jesus. That's true. We're getting out all our reserves from the past, from the crusade days. 
I'm giving it all to Jesus. I want to go home empty-handed. Empty-handed. And I want to hear my Jesus say, Well done, you good and faithful servant. Away with the jets, away with the six million dollar homes, away with all this garbage and old and foolishness. Jesus and souls only. That's Jack Vanity. It's the message of the Belgian Bible bombshell as long as I draw a breath. And I don't have any left at my age. Mm, you see why God brought him back? How wonderful we want to wind this program up by saying the reason God brought him back is not only to bring comfort to those who are troubled, but also to win many more souls to the Lord. Amen. That's maybe why you're watching right now. Have you ever really opened your heart to the Lord? I was a good church member. I grew up in a wonderful, godly home. But when I was 17 years old, my brother Bob, a godly man, Jack's talked about him, heard me crying in my bedroom. I was in college. They came in and said, what's wrong, Rixella? I said, I know all about Jesus, but I don't know him. And you know, my brother was very wise. He said something to me I'll never forget. You can know him, Rexella. The Bible says Amen. that I may know him and the power. Do you know him as your Savior? Has he Amen. come into your heart? Will you open your heart to the Lord right now, please? As Jack prays this wonderful prayer, asking Jesus to be your Savior. You can know him if you open your heart. Jack. Oh, Jesus, we love you and how you suffered on that cross, shedding your blood to cleanse us from every sin we've ever committed so that we never need be lost even for an hour. Thank you, Jesus. And we receive today into our hearts what you did for us. Lord Jesus, come in now and save me. I pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 If you've prayed that prayer, please write to me and I will send you this wonderful little book for steps in a new direction. And you know, I, I gave you the address right up front. It's Jack Van Impey Ministries, Post Office Box 704, Troy, Michigan 48007, or Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A651. So please, write to us. I love this little book, First Steps in a New Direction. And also, I want to say, you can order the final three popes, the final three popes. You need to know mm. what that's all about. I want to leave you with a wonderful thought right now. The power of Christ oh, in you is greater than the pressure of troubles around you. Look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.